Welcome to the February 4th Galaxy Developer Roundtable. Uh, today's topic is how to do a better job of bringing new Galaxy developers on board. So we're going to spend some time talking about possibly training, and then we want to discuss other ways to make this easier as well. So this is a one, two, three, four, five person effort at least to start with, and we expect it to grow. Um, and I encourage people to ask questions as we go and at the end as well. So um, let's see. So if you're, a, if you're a Galaxy developer, which I am not, I wanna make that clear. Um, what challenges are you going to face when you're new? One is the size of the project. Another is where do you find documentation? Where do you get help? What are the standards if you wanna contribute? And what is the process for contributing? There may be more than this. Um, there's a footnote at the bottom, which is my attempt to highlight that Galaxy is actually much bigger than just the Galaxy server code. Um, there's a whole ecosystem out there. And um, we need to do a good job of communicating to people that they can contribute to that as well and make it easy for them to find those resources too. So, okay. So what can we do to make this easier? And that is the central question of today's call. Again, we're going to seed that discussion with one particular idea about training, but we really want to hear from the rest of you about um, other things we can do. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my central proposal. Should we steal the admin training model? So we started admin training topics in Chicago at GCC 2012. And then we launched admin training as a separate event in November of 2016 with um, five days, 35 people. All of us tethered to Dan's phone at one point. It was, it was quite the experience. Um, we just finished the Galaxy Admin, uh, also five days, but with over 80 participants, free online and global. Um, that was coordinated by Helena, and I don't think everybody was ever connected to her phone, but um, we've come a long way in those five years, okay? So um, from 35 to 80, we've done it several times in between. Uh, a couple of really cool things happened along the way. One is um, the first GCC after that first one, we had a coherent day-long admin training track added. And that was a result, I think, of the um, Salt Lake event, the November event. Um, more importantly, I think we now have a robust library of Galaxy admin training tutorials. And uh, that gets updated twice a year. So that's in the GTN and it's a lot of material and it's current, okay? And it's kept current because we do admin training at least twice a year, once as a standalone event and then once as um, part of, uh, of GCC training, okay? And that is a, has been a huge win for um, Galaxy administration in my opinion because um, People no longer have to dig through obscure old emails in Galaxy Dev to find particular solutions. They have an excellent starting point for almost any topic they would care to cover when they're doing admin and configuration. And that's a result, or that's because of this robust library of training materials, okay? And again, I think that happened because of the training. So um, the, the question then becomes, would offering a three to five day developer training be useful for people? Would there be enough interest to justify the amount of effort that it takes to create and run that? And um, something else to think about is, can we do this without inducing instructor burnout? So the community already does a lot of training, already does a lot of curriculum development. Um, a lot of those people would be some of the same people who do developer training. And so how do we make developer training, if, if we do it, let's see, be as active and vibrant as admin training without burning people out? Um, because if we do that, it's not worth it, okay? Um, so um, if we do this, yeah, let's see, there'd be a couple wonderful side effects. Um, as mentioned, we would have um, tutorials and they would become more robust over time as have the admin tutorials. And the amount and quality of Galaxy developer training at GCCs would also increase. So we've had some developer training over the years at, at Galaxy meetings, um, but it could become on par with the admin training track we run every year. 
Okay. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I forgot this. Uh, so, assuming people think it is, here's a couple things to think about, and we can discuss this in two or three slides. But what should that training cover? What should the curriculum be? Um, let's see, me, Bay, and Dan are, are taking the lead on their curriculum. Um, if you would be interested in, in helping with this, then contact us. Contact us. Um, and maybe possibly teaching this at a developer training event sometime in 2021, possibly as soon as GCC 2021, which leads us to the next slide. Um, get a hold of us. We'll have a follow up meeting after this one um, to discuss that. And if we don't think this is a good idea, then boo on you. No, then we respect that because none of us have free time to waste. Okay. So, next slide. Okay, Saskia Helena, I'm going to throw that at you. <clears throat> Okay, so um, this year, unfortunately, um, GCC will also be virtual event um, we announced today. Um, our idea is to have one week of training before the conference. Um, and like Dave said, last week we had uh, the admin training. It was all virtual, so we had pre-recorded videos that people could, in any time zone, could start whenever they want. They could follow these videos and get support online. So we would thinking of doing the same sort of format here. Um, so we could just reuse all the admin training that we developed for last week. But um, we have a similar um, training coming up in a week and a half for scientists uh, called Smorgasbord, which uses the same format. So we can then also reuse this. And I was thinking it could be nice uh, to try to have at least some core curriculum of the dev training um, GCC as well. Um, this could be something nice to aim for to, uh, to develop. Um, so you don't have to fill all the five days with eight hours of content. Um, in fact, it's, it's nicer if you don't for our participants do. But maybe you could have some core topics um, on Galaxy Dev, maybe tool dev, visualizations, um, things like that. So could be something to aim for. We had great success with this format in the admin training. I'd say it went fantastically and students got a lot out of it. I know a lot of instructors are somewhat uncomfortable with the idea of completely asynchronous training, but for students, we had really good feedback that it worked better for them, worked with their schedule, worked with their accommodations that they have in their own setup, their own compute environment, their own home. Yeah. And last year at the GCC, we had um, live trainings in two different uh, time zones, but the result of that was that we, first of all, had to identify two sets of trainers, and we couldn't always, so the offerings weren't the same, and this allows uh, everybody in the world to have access to the same program and the same materials. Um, it's a lot less stressful for instructors having to wake up at odd hours. So it's a bit more prep recording the videos, um, but during the week itself, it was less stressful for, for instructors. So definitely. And we would have maybe a room in, in Remo where um, participants can drop by to ask questions and interact with, uh, with the teachers and each other. And uh, we did support on Slack mainly um, for admin training. What is the current enrollment for Smorgasbord? Uh, 700 last time I checked. Okay. So this will be a, a, I'm sorry to say, it's a good stress test. Yeah. Um, and GCC probably won't be that big, but maybe it will, who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this will be a good stress test for that model. It worked last year with machine learning, which is something Freiburg put on, and there were 400 people signed up, something like that? Yeah, so we modeled it a little bit after their approach, 400 students then, and that worked fine. So, And that was all in the same time zone. So here, of course, it's spread out over uh, different time zones. So there will be fewer uh, active at once. OK, thank you. Oops. OK. And now I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to open the floor for whatever people want to talk about. Okay, so um, how do we onboard developers? That's the big question. What can we do to make that better? And is training one of those ways we want to do that?
Okay, I can pick something more controversial to throw out there if people want. Okay, that's a decided lack of enthusiasm. Sorry, I was trying to get myself uh, unmuted here. Um, being the developer that's on like uh, day three here, uh, currently being onboarded, um, one thing that I would find uh, very handy is just sort of a, uh, a welcome to Galaxy uh, development team uh, stuff, uh, just with links to the, the documentation um, you know, I can find all of this stuff if I'm poking around in the, the GitHub repositories, but, you know, oh, here's the uh, guidelines for uh, submitting your pull request, you know, create a branch name, follow this naming convention, um, uh, you know, so how to contribute, how I'm expected to do GitHub pull requests, just sort of a, a welcome packet. There's a lot of that around. Um, but it's sort of scattered all over the place. So just a, a common document that says, you know, Here's your reading material and your homework for the next week. Uh, come back when you've got your first pull request ready. That's a great idea to consolidate all that in one spot. There are some pretty standard files in like the Galaxy main repository, the contributing and readmes and stuff. But since the project spans like, you know, 100 repositories and who knows how many different domains, it makes sense to come up with a single place to find all those all those things. Yeah, just sort of, you know, a view of the project from 10,000 feet. Okay, so that's an argument for, for better, more coherent documentation. Of course you should do developer training. Like, <laughs> of course, there should be no question about this. The admins love it. You wouldn't have the admin community you do without admin training. Like, of course you need this for developers. Yeah, I guess I'm, my, my, not concern, but, but what I'm thinking about is how we should, how it should be positioned um, relative the hackathon and things like that. Because the hackathon is kind of like one of the, like my favorite things to get out of the hackathon is that hands-on sort of developer training and walkthrough kind of those those pieces of it um and that's of course going to be especially hard to replicate this year um so coming up with something useful here um i think is important okay. so yeah, i agree I with helena but i'm on the inside so sorry i interrupted someone i uh, said so i agree with helena as well i mean i, I think uh galaxy has become an uh, impenetrable uh, mammoth for newcomers. Um, and so organizing it based on like what Keith said, this is the first step uh, to this is how you run the tests locally. This is how you run an individual test locally, how to speed up that ex experience for uh, the developers, how to make it less intimidating. You know, I mean, there's the back end, there's the client uh, components that can each be either parallel tracks or subsequent ones, because I'm guessing not everybody's going to be interested in everything development wise. So it's more like a menu type uh, structure rather than a, uh, a, you know, you have to learn everything, like get the ball rolling and pick your thing. So would those be more like, kind of like the, we made a couple of them, but the, the videos on YouTube where like, here's how to do that client develop on the client with hot reloading it's a two minute video that shows you just getting started or I mean, more in-depth courses you need both I mean, I just... you need multiple different types of documentation you need the tutorials that walk you through really hand holding step by step you need the api documentation you also need the, like the developer focused documentation but i think we're talking about just the tutorial level sort of like really hand holding click this button now you can set up VS Code with hot reloading, blah, 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 run this command precisely, something you can copy and paste just to get people up to that speed. Yeah, I think that local environment setup is, is a, would be a huge help in this, um, in this because just going from cloning Galaxy to being able to you know, change something and know that the effects are seen is um, it's challenging for the first timers. That's a tough one because I'm sure everyone on this call does it differently, right? And that's fine. I mean, once you you know learn the, the 
tricks of the trade, do whatever you want. But like the very basic open source tools, um, things that are accessible, um, it doesn't have to be the ideal scenario. It just needs to be something that works on a vast variety of systems. Who, uh, who on the call has tried the, um, well, it's been updated just recently, but the you know uh, developer integration with VS Code where you can run and put breakpoints and things like that. I mean, it's the only way I work. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it if Can't I knew how. There's a, it, so that, well, the reason I was asking is we have the, the instructions are pretty good for that and they're concise. And I'm wondering how we can make those more discoverable because they work out of the box. And it's really, it's really nice if you know how to get there, I guess. And, and where is that? And know to ask for it in the first place, right? I guess the that's documentation. The there's a developer's documentation, like docs.galaxyproject.org documentation. Cool. Just asking for a friend. And then the other half of us uses Vim and PDB and silly print statements. So maybe uh, we could do both for, for a given topic. For example, how to debug Galaxy, how you do it with VS Code, how you do it with, with the shell. Sorry to interrupt. Um, yes, it's nice to have definitely different environment setups that work for different people. I just wanted to show this graphic that I saw the other day. And we've got a lot of reference documentation. We've got some how-to guides, but we're missing the tutorials. And I think this was a nice framework for saying, OK, these are the different types of documentation a project needs and where we have gaps. I'll put the link to this in the chat. Thanks, Elena. So as uh, when as a, another new developer, um, I, the most useful thing I found was the I think there, it's like a Galaxy Internals uh, GTN course that uh, goes through a lot of stuff. It's pretty long as uh, the server is pretty complicated at this point, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, and it's, it's pretty long and it's still uh, kind of skims some parts, but something like that, but even longer, I don't know, broken up. I know it just takes more time to write more documentation, though. The problem with very detailed um, developer documentation is that it's fundamentally different from admin documentation. Admin documentation uh, persists uh, because what we do with Galaxy persists. Uh, Backend stuff, developer stuff, is implementation detail, which changes all the time. So uh, if we have very, which is not a bad thing, if we have very detailed developer documentation going into details, it will be a considerable effort to keep it uh, up to date because things might change on a daily basis of how things work. Um, I mean, so I think maybe we shouldn't like go into that rabbit hole um, but instead like it should probably not go deeper than what is in the galaxy internals uh, because that's sort of the high level view and then just you know describe one component fully in depth and you know the, the rest is the same like yeah you, like I actually think galaxy's gotten a bit easier and like the concepts are all the same. So, um, you know, if you describe one API controller, you can get started. It's, it's all the same. Good to hear. I um, hate I... to ask this question, but have we defined what developer training includes? Uh, things like tool development, that won't change very often. Things like contributing to the client, that changes more often, but it's very important to onboard developers. Um, do you have another type of uh, building visualizations? That's another type of training that's missing. Maybe we but can yeah, start what? a list. Maybe we can start a list of these kind of things of what do we want to add to how to's, how to write a tool, how to do visualization, how, how, how to write a test, how to write different yeah. kind of tests. That's a great start. And that'll be a great jumping off point for the schedule for GCC. 
are we are we thinking to include these in the standard GTN repo or so that because there already is a slightly outdated but a visualization training there. Um, Please. Yeah. We'd love to have them there. We're happy to help with any infrastructure changes you need, things like that. I think it might also, after this uh, general introduction, it might also be important to um, identify like a good project for the for the person who just gets started, because having like a clean project makes it also clearer to what look at, right? And yeah, that's where I really like clean goal. And I mean, I think people might need assistance uh, to find a proper project, and then we would also find a person maybe even to assist, and then. That would be probably yeah. more. That's what usually comes out of the hackathon part of it that I really like um, is someone either has something they want to do or they're trying to find something to help with. And then you can find that project to, to use as a, a vehicle for them learning. Like I an, think the paper cuts are probably a good list to pull from for that. Yeah, I like that idea. I mean, the paper cuts are like, they, they go from one day to two years effort, right? I think we didn't do a good job. Separating we need them. to relabel the two-year effort when that's not paper cut. We, we can de-paper cut them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The mentoring angle has come up in several calls in the past week for me. So um, we're talking a lot about paper cuts. We're talking a lot about uh, the community in general and like how to bring on new communities. So like climate, when climate came on, um, they had a you know, specific people that were welcoming them. Thank you, Europe. Um, but, you know, if we get more communities coming in and um, we should, yeah, we should mentor them. Also new developers, it would be great to have a mentor once we identify what new developers are interested in and we can point them to the right people. I think that would be great, yeah. Yeah. Is that, um, I mean, I think like, you know, if, if you get somebody from the community that has interest, that's a good path. But if you hire somebody that does it for a job, I think that's another thing. Like um, there should probably, I don't know. I, I, I don't know exactly what goes into that, but like there, there should be a project and there should probably also be mentors from different teams. Yeah. So that, you know, they have more than one person to talk to. Yeah. And I don't think we can hire someone because we are so huge, so broad. We can't get the expertise in one person. So, so I don't, yeah. I, I can't imagine who that person would be. So, because again, everybody doesn't know everything, so. Could this be a way to incorporate working groups in terms of like, if you, once you figure out what people are interested in doing, you um, find someone from a specific working group to be that, or maybe maybe more than one person to be that mentor help them figure out their first PR or something like that? Yes. That's brilliant. I mean, that requires that the working groups are set up in a way that, you know, I mean, we know about the project uh, so that we are able to help, which is like departure from how we used to do it, which is just do it, which is not very helpful. So, I mean, now we, we have our roadmap, right? But if somebody comes in in between the roadmaps, um, I mean, of course they can say, well, I wanna do this and is there anybody here to help me? But like, um, yeah, supposedly we have 40% of free time, um, but maybe there should still be a way to have that planned out. Uh, it's a bit vague, but yeah. It seems uh, there are useful links, pages, videos spread out. So for a new person, you know, it would be difficult to know about all these. So maybe the first step is would be to collect all of these and put them in a, a Galaxy developer onboarding page. So at least, so for example, uh, John's YouTube videos are great. I had forgotten about them, honestly, I reviewed them. I watched them a while back and then I forgot about them. 
or there are some documentation in Galaxy Project that are pretty good on how you set up a uh, Visual Studio uh, uh, IDE, debug, test, all that stuff. So maybe one would be to collect what we have already and put it in a page that we pass on to the next developer and say, okay, these are what we have. Next would be we obviously add to those. One other thing, I don't know if how, how useful this is, but you know, I'm, 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 I've been here for a year now, so I'm not exactly that new like some other people, but a office hour would have been perfect. <laughs> so I collect my questions and then maybe once a week, we have an office hour, somebody can, I mean, I don't know how many people are there to justify this, but for me, six months ago, if there was such a thing as an office hour, I could gather all my questions, come 15 minutes, ask them, and then that would have been very helpful to me. So just to chime in on the first one, we've solved on the admin side with admin training being all in the GTN. They just go to the admin page and there's everything they need to go from zero to 100. And maybe paper cuts would be a good idea. I think Saskia said for overlap with office hours, we could achieve something similar there. Yeah, right now that's once a month um, and it's around the world. So it's every three or four hours. Even better. Uh, yeah, and we'd have to change the marketing slightly, which I would be all for. So, um, isn't that the point of paper cuts though? Oh, mentoring new students who have questions? Yeah, but Kaivon did not suggest paper cuts as a way to do this, which tells me something. So, yeah, I'm wondering how we can encourage not, oh, sorry about the kids, um, not buffering. Um, not buffering stuff for office hours either. Like, how can we encourage yeah. async first? Just ask the question as soon as you've got it and yes. someone answers, you know, I'm going to mute myself, sorry. I think there's, there's also balance. Like, I, I don't think it's productive to wait an hour, uh, to wait a week or whatever until a certain hour if you want to work on something. And there's enough people in enough time zones that you can ask a question and get an answer. Um, so I don't know, maybe our onboarding should also include just ask a question when you have the question. Um, yeah. With I think this, sorry to interrupt. I, I think this is connected to, to the mentor concept, right? So if you, if you know that you have a mentor that could uh, answer your questions and at least you, you have some person to point to your questions instead of launching them in the void and hoping for someone to reply, even if that most of the time happen. There's also like a social component to asking for help. I'm a relatively new developer and I am just starting to get to the point where I'll ask questions publicly. I mostly will ping Dan indirectly or John directly because I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound inexperienced. I don't want to sound like I'm asking a stupid question. Um, and so that's why having that one-on-one -on -one connection is really helpful. Yeah, I'll second that. I mean, I, I feel like if I were in an, it's so much easier being in a in-person office environment. I mean, I just swing by someone and ask them a question. Um, I mean, office hours would be great, but you know, just being right next to people who you can just shoot a question to is invaluable. But yeah, I, I mean, is there something to make? It's like a one-on-one -on -one thing. Is there a way to encourage maybe still going the public route? I mean, you know, you can do hybrid. Um, I understand it's a problem. Um, like when you're new, you want to sh show that you're competent and you can you can work it all out. That uh, there is also so much time to be saved. Uh, still, I mean, like you know, there's also the question like you can get different answers from different people. Um, if it's in public, there's there's a lot of advantages if this is all in public. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess when it's digital, like right now, like 
just throwing it out to the general chat room is more efficient. And that's, I guess, what I would do these days. But, um, but I don't know. I think uh, Asinda is certainly onto something, and maybe it argues for some kind of mentorship relationship. Yeah, it's this is it's a tough thing to balance, right? Because I think there's a lot to learn by sort of osmosis in the channels too, right? So like you ask a question, then 20 other people see it and they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Now I know that for next time, even if you hadn't intended it. So there's a huge community benefit to just asking. Um, but I totally get the, you know, new to a project, you might be asking a question to a thousand people on the <laughs> main, the main uh, channel and it's, it's intimidating. So there's something to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a good answer for this, but it's definitely a, something we need to work on. Yeah, and, and from the from the like as a person who probably answers more questions than he asks, it's uh like the thirty minutes that I like have set aside for a meeting with Asunta each week is nice. I mean, it's it's like it's I, I mean, there's just so many questions being asked publicly, and I there was a time in my life where I had the like you know throughput and social energy to do that, but I just you know the world being what it is today, I just don't, and so like oh like having that like. Uh, explicit relationship and, and explicit time to do that may, let, lets me focus on those things and, and sort of make them a priority too. But yeah, I, I agree though that there's real downsides and figuring out how to make it public would be great. I mean, the other thing is that, you know, if, if it's common questions to be consistent and then afterwards put it in some sort of how do I or like that, you know, you can have both, you can have the um, private conversation, uh, but keep the knowledge around. Which was great um, about the mailing list, right? I mean, you can still find all these old answers and a lot of it still applies. We, we lose that a bit with Gitter. I mean, it's not as searchable. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Although search is better now in Gitter, but still not. Yeah, I can't get Google to crawl Gitter archives. So. I don't get it. Other projects can. I, I but they, yeah, it's, we should figure that out. The mailing list was good too because it was, oh, I shouldn't admit this, but it was like they were to do lists. Like it was a to do list. It was in my email. I was like, I'll get back to that. And it was like persistent in a way that, I mean, I guess that's what Galfi help is. And I don't check that and probably should, but. Uh, in the chat, David said um, that, you know, the working groups feel like a little bit more like concentrated areas where you feel a little more safe asking questions. And I have seen in the working groups I'm involved with some more specific technical questions and discussions than I had like in the like dev room or Galaxy project room. So I think those are a step in the right direction here. But I, yeah. Yeah, it is for your groups. I was Sorry, I, I was just gonna say, I do worry a little bit that those are more isolated, that the greater dev channel could benefit from a lot of the conversation, just sort of this osmosis learning. Um, but yeah, it's something to balance because a lot of people only sit in dev, right? Um, and they wouldn't know to go to the back end working group or this, that, or the other. Yeah, probably joining a working group could be intimidating for new yeah. people. It does imply sort of that you take on something, right? It's not just. Yeah. I mean, I it shouldn't, I guess, but I, yeah. I sit in some channels where I don't contribute, right? Because I do want to see the things and I, you know, I see the UI discussion, even though I, I tend to try to stay out of it. Um, it's just good to see. So I, I think people should feel free to sit in the channels at least. Um, yeah, maybe it's just knowing to sit in those channels. Um, I don't think right now, so Bjorn mentioned um, the working groups being the primary entry point for new contributors and restructuring where that's the focus. And maybe that would fix that problem um, where you know, okay, I got to join, if I'm interested in UI, I'm going to join this working group instead of just sitting in dev or the, the lobby. We maybe alter the dev uh, description to link out to the rooms. 
maybe each working group could, if we do compile a document, like a central landing place for new developers, and I, I maybe that is contributing the contributing document in the, GitHub, in the Galaxy repo, maybe it's something else, but maybe each working group can go through and sort of say like, here's a paragraph, like what are your links? What are your, what are your key pieces of documentation for people want to contribute? Um, maybe that could be there. Yeah, that's good. I mean, we, I think it should be in contributing. That's great. Um, it's, I think we've kind of assembled most of that content already on the hub too. So we could yeah. just move it. So this could be just me because I'm the hub guy, but in contributing people are going to have a harder time finding it. And it emphasizes that it's all about the main server, which I don't think we want to emphasize. So but I see everything through a hub lens. So makes sense on hub. I never go to hub, but I never watch videos either. It's just I work on you, Marius. <laughs> yeah. I'll start putting jokes planted here and there. So <laughs> just to check that everyone's on board for we need training for GCC three days or so. That wasn't clear to me if if that's I didn't you know, get a lot of feeling of agreement on that topic before you segued into onboarding? Yeah. So the people who expressed opinions said yes, but not a lot of people expressed opinions. Is that a fair summary? Yeah. I mean, my, my preference would be to scale up the architecture training. I mean, I'm, again, <laughs> speaking of lenses, right? I do the, you know, I, I spent five hours doing the architecture training last year. Um, it would be nice to sort of but that was really just what it's three or four hours of content. If we could like say, what could we do if we were going to double that? Uh, what would that look like? Um, I mean, we have a whole day of tool training, at least a whole day of tool training available, right? Um, and there's the visualization training. That's another two and a half hours. API. We've got a lot of the pieces here already. If we just want to sort of repackage it and fill out the missing, fill out the gaps. Exactly. And make sure there are updates and things like having training on setting up VS Code with hot reloading, I think would be very key to all of that coming off successfully. Yeah. I had flashbacks I, to I, contributing I, to Galaxy Workshop that four people came to about five years ago. I think about that a lot. John, I would also second your overview document or view training. I found that useful when I first attended GCC. I see comments in the, um, the chat about that too. It's definitely something we should base the developer training around. That is the first introduction. Here's how it all is laid out. And then individual trainings on specific topics, which will work really nicely with asynchronous mode because people can just choose which topics they're interested in and go to those. Maybe around the content piece, it would be nice. What I mean, the architecture training is a little bit more reference than uh, hands-on. And so I think maybe a, a key piece that's missing here and that I've never really seen is um, maybe we should just have like a go-to example, like adding something to Galaxy that like doesn't actually get merged, but like everyone adds a controller that does, I, I don't even know what that controller would be, right? But like some, some example that everyone could work through and get to that last stage where you like see the PR, but then just close it. Um, cause we obviously have that for tools. We, I'm assuming we have that for visualizations. I mean, the API has a bunch of specific hands-on examples. So all of those developer pieces have that, but the, uh, code contribution piece, I don't think has that. And that's, I guess it's kind of hard to come up with a good example. That's going to stay relevant and stay updated, but. Yeah, I know the feeling we have a tutorial for the training materials, which is how to contribute and focuses on things like Git and making PRs, that sort of thing. I'm not sure how useful it is. Do you have a feeling? No. It's useful. John just said something that uh, prompted a thought in my head. Um, so, you know, I don't even know what controller would I add. So what prompt, what would prompt the developers to either attend uh, or, you know, take this training uh, or ultimately contribute to Galaxy, right? I mean, are we targeting uh, new people that are being hired by either Galaxy or related projects, and this is gonna be their job? Or is it people that are scratching an itch, in which case they would presumably have a controller they wanna add? 
So for admin training, we just teach them no matter if they're working for us or not. I think it has the most social benefit that everyone learns how to contribute. Even it's if it's a very not, different not audience. Getting something out of it, right? Even if we're not getting a trained developer or someone directly contributing a controller. I mean, so, like the 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 my thing is one class of users here or one class of uh, consumers of this content has long-term benefits and they want to learn a comprehensive process for how Galaxy code is laid out, the architecture, uh, best practices, and and they are willing to invest. You know, potentially days of training uh, to to get up to speed. The ones that are trying to scratch their itch are like, I, I'm just an, more annoyed uh, than than annoyed by having to spend an hour or so setting up a local environment and fixing something quickly. Uh, so I think those are actually like two target audiences here. Uh, one, we just need to enable them to set this up super quick, solve their problem, and move on and be happy. I think I think we have uh, material for those for that type of audience. It's just a two-minute video they can watch, scratch their itch, be done with it, move on. Uh, as for the controller, I, I don't think the point is that this is a, a very specific controller that is going to be relevant to this that person. The point is that the controller possibly is a good a good vehicle through which. Uh, you will be able to teach the different parts of uh, changing something in Galaxy or adding a feature to Galaxy. So uh, a controller would be a vehicle for uh, backend adding, exposing some functionality through an API. So how you would add an endpoint to an API, how you would test an endpoint and an API, how would you test this new uh, functionality you are adding and then how you would expose it on the front end. So it's just all these different parts and the control is just one possible relatable vehicle package. I'd like to throw out another use case or another potential audience, which is researchers. Um, I curate papers and I come across a lot of papers that extend Galaxy for provenance or a different way to do workflows or you name it. And that's actually a fairly common publication type where they're making some significant change to some underlying plumbing to see how it works and make their argument for their thesis. So that would be another group of people that we would reach is researchers who want to use it as a platform for research, computer research. Do any of the other PIs want to voice support for this? <laughs> or that's rejection of it, that's not important? Sorry, I talked over you, Daniel. No, I said it's a great idea. I, I, yeah, we need more documentation. We need it all arranged. We need easier ways to onboard people, right? I, I think what Anna said is correct. You need people, okay. need the deep dive. We also need the quick start, right? So, yeah. Anton, this sounds good to you too. He's still here. Of course, I'm the one who okay. still hasn't uh, give you videos for smog. Uh, yeah, about uh, that. But I'll, I'll, I'll get to it soon. So in principle, yes. In principle, yes, because we have infinite resources. Uh, yeah. I'm, I can't find it now. There's a there's a like a really hot app right now that like you develop a whole you, you Put a whole developer environment into a container and attach it to your project on GitHub and you can launch it. Are those called workspaces? VS Code has, yeah, integration with the, it's VS Code workspaces or GitHub workspaces yeah. via VS Code. <laughs> That's really cool. Is, I think it, it, it might still be beta invite only. Yeah, it's beta yeah. and the. Uh, I've tried it though, it's really, really slick. <laughs> that might be the scratch your particular itch version of this, right? Um, I mean, one thing that the admin material is doing well uh, is that it's streamlined with the Ansible playbook. So yeah, maybe the uh, code spaces could be like the thing to get started without fussing with setup and stuff. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes left. Um, I'm gonna try and summarize. I think 
there's you know, not an overwhelming consensus, but a, a, a consensus that we should do some sort of dev training. We should go after low hanging fruit, like actually centralizing what we have and creating easy ways to find it, not centralizing everything in one place, putting pointers in one place, you know, have a landing page for new devs, which, which makes sense. Um, mentoring is big. Uh, what else? Okay. What I propose doing is that the five of us or the three of us, depending upon how interest is, um, that presented today, we type up a summary and distribute that. Let's see, what I wanna suggest for all of you is get a hold of us if you're interested in pursuing making developer onboarding better, okay? In a time commitment sort of way. I'd like to sense? volunteer Sergey for that, just since he started coming up with a good list. I'm all for volunteering Sergey for pretty much everything, so. Sounds good. <laughs> and that's on tape, so, huh. Okay. Okay, in our remaining, well, yeah, I mean, we can end early too, that's always a win. Um, but we got nine minutes left. Does anybody have anything else they wanna talk about? Say, make a point. Okay, I'm gonna declare victory then. And um, John, you can stop recording. And uh, thanks everyone for your input.